I want to tell you about the time I was mistaken for someone who had the same name as me. CapCut has some really cool AI features built into it. And I want to show you a couple of the ones that I think are underrated right now. One of them is going to be their AI characters. These are similar to what you see in HeyGen, DID, and Synthesia. Whereas those seem like they're more designed for like corporate things, these feel more designed for social videos. And I'll show you what I mean. They also have the ability to generate images. I want to maybe do a deeper dive on CapCut. So if people like this video, I'll do a deeper dive on that. All right, so let's just jump in. If you log into CapCut over here, there's this thing that says magic tools. So we're going to go there. Um, and then we're going to go to create with AI. That's the easiest way to get to these tools. Um, so right now you see this one is free, AI characters. This is what we're going to go for right now. If you've ever used a tool like Synthesia or HeyGen, this is going to seem really similar where you can go through and you can change outfits um, for the different characters that you want. I'm not sure why there's Santa outfits in April, but you can choose different kinds of characters. They're very inclusive, I think, which is great, not just in terms of like the characters, but in the terms of the different um, outfits that they have. What you'll notice about like these is not just like the outfits, obviously, but like the poses. So there's this pose where you can tell it looks like someone's holding a camera and they're recording this as a selfie. So this is definitely designed to be something that's more um, for social media. And then if you, you know, if you can click over here too. So if you'll notice, I clicked all of those different ones and it puts all of those on the timeline. Um, I don't really want to do that. Like I want to make sure like, let's just select all of them and delete. So when you're actually doing this, what you want to do is like choose your character and then come over here to appearance and select it here. And then if I click any of these, it changes the character there. But what I wanted to show you too, is that like, if you click this little button here, there's this like double arrow button, um, you know, you can play it off the timeline and you don't see the motion. But if you click this little button here, you can see what the motion is like. And this motion kind of gets repeated. It's not an exact loop, but this is what you'll see for that character when they're talking. What's cool about that is that you have ones like this where someone is walking and talking. And so if you could, you know, put them in the right kind of background where it looks like the background's moving a little bit, um, it can be, or you could even like do something where you animate them where they get a little bit closer to the screen and then switch to another one. A lot of them have the same, like you'll have the selfie version with this top and then the standing version with this top. So if you're looking for like a story kind of thing, um, you could have like, you know, the selfie version and then this presenting version, and it's in the same outfit. That works for you know a lot of the characters. And like in this case, you've got actually got this guy who is doing a selfie, and then he's also walking towards the camera, and then he's just standing. So you have different shots that you can bring together to create a story that way. And you'll notice this is two seconds, but that doesn't mean that you're limited to two seconds of dialogue. You can put in a minute of dialogue, and it will keep the whole thing. Let's. Let's look at the voices now. I do like to keep this like really short narration in here, like their default text, just because when you go through the voices, if you put your whole script in there, it's going to take a lot longer to load each time. So it's faster to just go through the um, characters. So it has the recents. This is the one that comes with it. And then here's the male voices. So I'm going to scroll down until I see um, the female voices. So this is the default text. Sometimes it is nice to put maybe one sentence of what you want to have in there so you can make sure the cadence and everything sounds right for the story that you're trying to tell. Because sometimes it might sound good with, hey, nice to see you, but when you're looking for a certain delivery, that character doesn't deliver it the way you want it to. So the voices aren't as good as like 11 Labs, if I'm being honest. Um, the, the voices are actually kind of the weakness in this whole thing. I think that the motion is really good. Um, the voices don't sound super great. So you really have to find a voice that uh, matches what you're going for. So I'm gonna choose that one. Um, I have a little script here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna have this first part be the selfie. So I'm gonna go um, there, I'm gonna click apply. And then it, so it generated the audio and now it's applying the audio to that character. So now I wanna cut and have her get to the bulk of the story. Oh, I have to add another clip now. So now I've got this selfie one and her name is Esther. So I'm gonna have her doing, I, I wanna keep the same outfit for Esther. I could also search here for Esther and then see all of the styles. 
So now I have this one here. And again, I'm, I'm going to be able to zoom in and out. Um, but at least this will look like she's recording it all in one. Um, and then I'll paste the new script in here for section two. It changed the voice, so I have to go back. And um, now since I've chosen this one, she, she's not flirting, but it's called Flirty Female. It sounds the most natural to me for this character. So it's in the recents, and I can choose it that way. And then I'm going to apply it. It's going to generate the speech. Now it's going to apply it to the character. One thing I'm going to do is add some visual elements up here. So we'll probably like move her down here. I think people do that kind of thing a lot, like the green screen thing. And I'm going to do the same. I know it's kind of weird, but I'm going to do the same standing one in the same pose. And then for the last one here, I'm going to put the thing there. I'm going to go back to the selfie for the last one. And that'll be nice for when it loops too, I think. And I put these dashes in to see if it would add a pause and it doesn't, but um, that's why the dashes are there, just so you can see that it doesn't pause. And now, so we've got like a 45 second video, a 45 second video starts with a selfie, then she's over here, so we can still move her around in the frame. So now we wanna put a background behind her. Um, let's put her in an apartment. This is very like studio kind of lighting. I think that might work for like a sunny apartment. So if we go here to elements, up here it says AI characters, we're gonna click back. Here's stock videos, there's these photos. So you can kind of click here and see what they would look like. You can click view all photos, and these are just static photos. And then let's just say like apartment. You'll notice some of these are um, landscape mode and some of them are portrait mode. So we can go here to the filter button and just choose the aspect ratio that we want and go like that and say done. And that way now we've got ones that we know will fit. And you know, the bathroom is kind of funny, but a lot of people film things in bathrooms. So that's not totally funny. So this one's kind of generically apartment-y. Um, you'll notice I click it there and it just brings it over here. What I'm gonna have to do is, um, if you know how most video editing works, there's layers, right? Now, one thing you'll notice, you'll notice a couple of things here. There's black bars here um, on the image. Um, so we can fix that by clicking the image there and clicking this button for fill and it will just fill it. So we could also do that manually, but it's nice that there's just a button that will do that. So let's go with this one. Um, and she's talking selfie style. I can, um, if I want to zoom her in a little bit and have it be more like this, I can do that. We'll change her location here and then we'll have her go for this section. She's going to be in this room. We'll do the same thing here and go fill to fill it up. Um, we can change the background to put it wherever we want. If we want to have it over a little bit more, show like the light. Um, can move her in the frame a little bit too. So she's by the window this way. And then for this one, like let's just drag this out to here. And then if you click here, now we can, we have a split here. I'm going to zoom her in a little bit more for dramatic effect. And then I'll zoom the background a little bit more too. I'm not sure if I'm doing this exactly how it would look. Here we could go, if we wanted to, we could go effects and type in blur. And there's a blur effect here. And we can just drag that onto, oh, so here's the thing. So this blur effect is now added to her too, right? And right now this blur is attached to her and the background, but we can just take that and put it there and now the blur will only be affecting the background. And it's a little too much, so I'll click the blur there and reduce it like that. Um, so we could have that stretch across all of the clips or just some of the clips if we wanted. So I actually only want this on this clip. So I'm just gonna drag it over this way. And so we have this, and now when we get closer, it's blurry. Okay, so then I said we're gonna generate some images, right? So we've got her talking in different environments and then um, she's talking about certain things. So we wanna have images that kind of pop up that talk about that. And then I'm gonna click back to the home page. All right, so I'm gonna go um, to the home page, click magic tools for images, and there's this text to image. So we're gonna say um, a rental car in a fast food parking lot. So she talks about that in the video. And you can generate one, two, three, or four. Um, you can do square. I'm gonna do square because they're gonna be little things that pop up. So if you wanted to do a background, for instance, you could do a portrait mode one here. 
Um, and then you can choose all of these different styles as well. Uh, in this case, I, I'm gonna have these just pop up as little things that show up um, on the screen. So I'm gonna choose this um, and I can either download it or I can just click export all. And if I click export all, it will download them, but then they'll also show up in my assets later. So I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm gonna show you something, Pokemon cards. So I'm, I'm saying Pokemon cards here, right, on purpose. So it says inappropriate words or image recognized, try other words or images. So it's not gonna let me generate Pokemon cards. So I can say like animal or anime creature playing cards or something. So I can just do something like that where I'm not saying the brand word Pokemon and I'm describing it a little bit. And it's like, yeah, I know what you're looking for. Um, I'm gonna generate again, I don't like those. I wanna see the cards. So let's let's change up the prompt where we say anime creature playing cards inside a duffel bag. Ideally, it's gonna prioritize the cards and secondary is the duffel bag. Yeah, so, I'm, well, sort of. All right, this is the best one out of all of them, let's say. So I'm gonna export all of those. So we're gonna go back to the home page. I can go to recent drafts. I can see my mistaken identity one. And now I wanna, um, when she starts talking about things, what I want to do is see it brought in these images that we generated here. So the first thing she talks about is the car. Um, so I can just drag this to the timeline here and put it on the layer that I want to go on. And it goes there and I can kind of like put it back. It's overlapping her at that point. But what I can do because this is all done um, with green screen, I can just because the background is removed, I can do that and have it be so it's behind her and I could make it a little bit bigger if I wanted. Or So she's talking about the car and she talks about the cards and then um, the raccoon in the cage. Let's put this, I don't wanna see him behind bars. It's, it's too cute for that, right? And again, we're not going for realism here, we're going for storytelling. And if we wanna, if we wanna drag this out for a longer portion, we can do that as well. So if we wanna change the look too, if we don't like this look, there's, um, we can go to this filters tab. We go to the filters tab and there's um, different filters that we can drag up here um, and, and change the look of them. And we might not like that one. We might want to, you know, another one. I think sometimes these Hollywood ones look great, but they're pro. That one that I did was pro too. So um, that's the cool thing is you can actually see if you're using a pro thing, uh, if you're using one of their non-free options right on the timeline, which is neat. So this is how you would add them. And if you only wanted it to be like on the background, you could just change this. And now the background is affected, but she's not. Or if you wanted it to be everything except her, um, you could do it that way. So it really is just like you have the ability to, to do that pretty easily. We'll choose this one. And I'm, I'm just gonna apply it to the whole video here. So we've got a talking character with a background and a filter, changed her position and now there's like little supporting documents here to show what's happening. Um, we've blurred the background with an effect and let's just add some music, why not? So we're gonna go over here to the audio. I think I like this one. So we're gonna bring this in here. So we've got our music there now. Um, and then if we want to caption the whole thing, we can do that and just say auto captions, generate. Then we have all of our caption styles here. There's templates. A lot of these are pro templates, but you can go like this. I kind of like these styles more. 12 and actually I don't like this bangers font. Let's, oh wait, Sora bold. Wow, that's, that's bold. Let's choose that. So Sora bold and then let's go um, 14 maybe. Yeah, okay. And then it'll look like this. The other thing you could do if you wanna mix it up a little bit is like you could take a character like this and you could actually um, flip horizontal and now they're on this side. So the beginning and the end will be different. So this is how it starts and then this is how it ends. Um, so it won't feel like the same exact shot when it loops, it seems like this. And yeah, someone's gonna be like, hey, the hair was on the other side, but I don't know if anyone's gonna really notice that, you know? So this is a really cool and important feature too. I wish that Adobe Premiere had this. This is so obvious that it's needed. There's this little TikTok preview. Like Premiere has like safe zones for like broadcast TV standards from like the 50s and 60s. Um, TikTok is like, hey, here's some safe zones. So this is where the UI elements are gonna be. 
Um, and you can just kind of toggle back and forth and make sure that you're not um, covering any important things. Like you don't want to cover up, you know, the, some of the buttons maybe. Um, so these captions go over the name. So we might want to just move the captions um, up a little bit like that. And then they're all moved up a little bit. So um, very cool feature to have that built in. It's right there, close preview, and now I can just see it regular. So there you go, a, a free way to create some AI generated videos. So if you like tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe. If you like this one, leave a comment or give a thumbs up or something. I just want to see if people are interested in CapCut because I'm really intrigued by it and I'm intrigued by the possibilities of what it's going to mean in the future. All right, thanks for watching and here's that video. I want to tell you about the time I was mistaken for someone who had the same name as me. We've all had moments like that, but my story took a weird turn. The stranger who approached me thought I was someone else. I was given the keys to a rental car. That wasn't the weird part though, and the passenger seat was a duffel bag full of rare Pokemon cards. I didn't know they were rare at the time. I had never actually seen a Pokemon card before, this is where it gets weird. In the back seat of the car, there was a sedated raccoon in a cage. I was handed an envelope with $500 cash. My instructions were to drive to a small town seven hours away. Once I delivered the cards and the raccoon to the address I was given, I would be given another thousand dollars in cash. It was a Saturday. I had no plans. What could go wrong? Oh, hey, if you're still watching, you should definitely subscribe. I was told there would be a screen with a subscribe button. If you don't want to subscribe, or maybe you already have, leave a comment. I won't read it because I'm not real, but a real person will. Okay, well, bye.